Good morning. Welcome to the Interfaith Chapel. And today is the senior Interfaith Chapel. We have Yahya, Yahya Farah. Uh, Yahya is a senior and also is a transfer student from MCTC. Um, he's been with us since 2020, he transferred. So he's been with us for a year, uh, almost two years now. Um, Hamza, I mean, sorry. Yahya. <laughs> Um, Yahya is going to share a little bit of reflection on his time at MCTC and his time here at Augsburg and his work here at MSA. Um, Yahya is majoring in MIS, computer, it's a management information. Is it management information? Huh? System. System is the, yeah. So I would like to welcome um, Yahya. Hello everyone. Hope you all hope you all are having a wonderful day. As for those who mentioned, my name is Yahi Fada. I'm a senior, which is pretty obvious as I'm doing the speech. Uh, I'm, the, I'm a first generation college student, first in my family that'll be graduating college, uh, which I'm very excited for. I'm majoring in the management information system. And as I mentioned before, I'm the vice president of the Muslim Student Association. I'll touch back on those two things, but today's theme is about storytelling. And as I'm in the final chapters of my book called College. I wanna go back to chapter one. So as for those who mentioned, I'm from MCTC. I'm a transfer student. I was part of this program called the Augie Plan, where I just take my general classes at MCTC and if I maintain good grades, uh, I'll be able to transfer Osbert to work on my major. As you see now, it's something that's working out for me, but there are many factors why I chose this route. The first one was money, uh, because my parents, uh, they've done so much things for me and my siblings to provide for us, but they also had a responsibility towards the people back home. So I didn't want to become a burden to them and go to university right away. So I just took this route because I know going to MCT would, tuition would be very low. In fact, you know, they was paying me to go to college. So that was a kick, that was a plus to it. Secondly, I wasn't such a strong student in high school. Like I didn't put in that much effort into it. So with the mindset I had at the time, I didn't think that I was ready for university. Even though I could have went, I just didn't want to go there because I didn't know that I was going to be able to make it past freshman year with the mindset I had. So going to the MCTC helped better me as a student, helped, helped me structure better. And lastly, I knew a couple people who was going to the school, so they gave me some insight on what classes to take, and it was pretty smooth. So my first year at MCTC was pretty smooth. Uh, my mindset changed. Uh, it's going to sound crazy as I say this right now, but um, I knew my son going, going to school was, you know, you have to treat school like somebody you don't like. And it sounds crazy, but when it's somebody you don't like, you don't want them to ever get the best of you. So those moments, you know, you're doing your homework, you don't know the answers, you're stressed out. I never wanted to be put in that situation. So I always avoided it. Uh, it's something that works, but I don't recommend it for everyone. Uh, I became exposed to Osberg uh, during 2018 when they went to Massacre because my school also participated in it. Uh, I got to meet uh, some friends I went to high school with and also along uh, also some members of MSA there too. It was a very cool experience and they were very, very welcoming. And I knew at the time, right then and there, I was like, this is the school I want to graduate from. Um, um, uh, it was very good, the massacre trip. Uh, yeah. So let's fast forward uh, to the middle chapters. It's the spring semester of my second year, MCC, and we get hit with COVID. Uh, I remember I was very like down bad in my chemistry class. Like I didn't think I was gonna make it out, but uh, the school told us that we got like extra weeks of break. You know, I was happy. Me and my friends were all happy for it. Uh, I know it sounds a little tone deaf because COVID was something that was real. Uh, it's, it's, we're still going through it as we all got our masks on right now. Uh, but, you know, we went to online schooling. It was something that was easy for me to adjust to because I took some online classes previously uh, and I passed all my classes. So, so after I finished my time at MCTC, I was applying for Osberg. So after applying for Osberg, uh, you know, I got regular common application stuff, apply for essay, do your essays and stuff, uh, choosing, when it, when it came to choosing my major, uh, I had to ask some people that I went here, like, what was the best major to choose? Already had some in mind, like accounting and finance, 
But, you know, after hearing some other people's opinions and uh, doing my own research, I found that MIS was the major to go. You know, with MIS, it has like great opportunities. Uh, you can start an entry level data entry and a year or two become a project manager, which is something I wanted to become. So I did, after registering, doing all the stuff, I did my first year SOARS Zoom meetings and stuff. Those were fun. Uh, so it was the beginning of junior year. I'm officially in Augie. Was there any assignment? And I'll be honest, there wasn't. We were in online schooling. I didn't go to campus. And uh, I could say that in my, in my hands, I went to Osborne like three times during that, during that time. Uh, so my fall semester was went pretty smoothly. Uh, all my classes were great. Uh, it wasn't until like spring semester, you know, when I was adjusting to my classes, my life took a crazy turn. Last year, uh, I lost my sister. Uh, she was a year older than me, and it really affected me really bad. Looking back at it, when you're when uh, when you're young, it's just so full of life. You don't ever think of it just ending like that. The timing of it was just insane because two days before her passing, my sister lost her friend who was our neighbor. So there's been a lot of deaths in our community and it's told that death is a reminder of what's to come. It doesn't care how old you are, what you had planned, when is your time, it's your time. Uh, when we were going to the funeral, because in Islam, you're supposed to bury the dead quickly. Uh, we heard many lectures from the speakers and stuff and driving back from the funeral, we were all just reflecting. It was a dead silence in the car of how we, we can better ourselves. By the time we came home around that time, um, uh, it was the afternoon prayer after. So we all prayed together. And then uh, that was my last moment of seeing my sister alive because I had to go to work that day. And then at my work, I work like, is the way it's structured is I work 40 hours straight. So from Friday evening to Sunday afternoon. Uh, so I get the call on Sunday, my brother's calling me. He's saying that, uh, my sister is not breathing. I rush home. I see paramedics trying to resuscitate her. And then we shortly get the news saying that she passed away. Me and my parents were all in disbelief. My parents and my siblings were all in disbelief. Like, you know, how can something like this happen? But, you know, as Muslims, you know, we're not supposed to question what, what God has planned for you. Uh, during those times, they're very tough for me. Uh, I became closer to my religion. You know, there's very, there's a lot of verses in our Quran that teaches us for moments like these. I'll, re I'll read them right now. Uh, and I remember when I saw the verses in the Quran, and I said, Oh my God, I'm so grateful that Allah is And we surely will test you with something of fear and hunger and a loss of wealth and lives and fruits. But give good tidings to those who are patient who when disaster strikes them say, indeed we belong to Allah and indeed is him we will turn. So in our religion, you know, we think everything happens to you for a reason. Everything in life is a test, whether it's good or bad. And it's up to you how you react to those situations. Are you gonna question all the bad things and like hate what was planned for you? No. So uh, and another verse, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. God does not burden the soul uh, that is beyond what is their ability. So I knew this was something that, you know, I was able to handle through time. As I got closer to my religion, it really helped me cope through these moments. And uh, it helped me cope through these moments and you know, I was able to uh, pass on my classes. Uh, so uh, we're at the, like, the second to last chapter of this book and we get the email saying we're going back to school. A part of me was excited, and a part of me was like, I got to get up from bed and just go to school now. It wasn't, yeah. So uh, it was my first day at school, Osberg, in-person learning, and I was a little nervous, uh, a little almost two years of online learning and being behind a black screen, mostly forget how to talk to people sometimes. I know we can all relate to how we were all in those breakout rooms, and it was just awkward silence. No one's talking. <laughs> Um, but it was pretty cool. I met, I made a lot of new friends here. Uh, I got connected with people quickly and uh, I got the chance to be part of MSA. So I have to give a quick shout out to the uh, members of MSA, even though some of them can't make it. Uh, our president Shamarki, our treasurer Hamza, our PR person Hafsa, 
co-event planners Angela Sama, and last but not least, our secretary, Faldemo. We can't forget about for our advisor, Ferdosa, for helping us become the go to MSA group. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, uh, this, this group got written off last year due to some internal disputes, but you know, we're like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Uh, we brought MSA back. Uh, did things start well from the jump? No, nah, these were people I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know what was in store for us for the year, but it wasn't until like our second event uh, when we had a crazy turnout, like I think 50 plus people came and like we were all asking the students, like, what do they expect from us? They gave us a list of expectations. And then after that, everything became a sync. Uh, we did a lot of great events uh, uh, during my time here at, uh, at MSA. We have a lot of halakas where we bring in guest speakers from local mosques and stuff. Uh, and they talk to us about the religion. Uh, we also have like events and stuff. Uh, we also went to Massacre this year. Uh, it was a very cool experience because uh, hanging out with uh, the board members and on top of that, members of our MSA, uh, going to these lectures, gaining knowledge and exploring the city of Chicago. It was a very good experience for me. Uh, I'd say that uh, for all the non-Muslims here, uh, you see guys uh, come through the MSA. It's a very inclusive place. Uh, if you guys want to ever gain knowledge of Islam and what MSA is all about, just come through our events. Um, my senior year so far has become, it was something that was nice. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's sad to say that it's almost coming to an end. I wish I had another year or two, but that's how life is. Uh, I, I'll end this speech with a quote by Booker T. Washington. Uh, success is to be measured not so much by the position that you, one has reached in life, but as by the obstacles which he has overcome when trying to succeed. Uh, that's my speech. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Ahia. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us and thanks for sharing your intimate moments with us as well. Um, I just want to say go forth with peace. Salam.